He's Mike Tarico of NBC Sports. How are you, Mike? I guess we do know each other because I was about to say that sounds like a fraudulent welcome based <laughs> on a fraudulent <laughs> holiday. We have known each other for quite some time. <laughs> what do you think of the Big Ben uh, soundbite that we just played there, Mike? So I uh, I read it on the Twitter. And I was like, okay, well, what does this mean? And I'm glad you played it because I got to hear it so you don't have to uh, get the intent uh, kind of made up in your own mind. You can hear the tone with which it was said. It sounds honest. It doesn't sound like a guy who's walking away from the NFL. It just sounds like taking inventory. Remember, there have been a lot of injuries here along the way with Ben. Brady is special and unique. Not everyone's going to play the 39. We saw the dramatic difference in the level of ability for Peyton Manning as he got on. Uh, I I can give you anecdotally, Rich, after the Christmas game when you guys were in the studio, Mm -hmm. the Baltimore-Pittsburgh game, walked out of the booth and down past the Steelers locker room on the way out of the stadium. Ben was there with his wife and the two kids. He had one of the kids over his neck and just taking them for a ride out to the parking lot. And it was just that reminder that the guy who I've been calling his game since he was at Miami of Ohio is getting towards the back end of his career. Do I think he plays next year? I'm just guessing. I say yes, but I don't blame him for starting to think about the end as opposed to the middle of his career at this point. Well, it's just interesting that we we bring all this up um, because, uh, or this is all getting brought up now, and by by Ben, because, I I mean, all, all you have to do, though, is if you if if you are wavering about it, if if when you do it publicly, you're now putting your team in a position to have to address it, and not just address it, you know, in, in the media, but when it comes time when you're on the clock, in a draft, and all we saw yeah. like Tony Romo became persona non grata all of a sudden, yeah. and wh- why can't that happen to Ben if he's opening the door to Pittsburgh to say I'm I'm going to do this every year? Think right. about so it. Did you? And I can't answer this. Uh, did you see enough in Landry Jones against the Patriots? And uh, it, it wasn't like they couldn't function offensively. The Patriots are just better as they were in the regular season in the playoff game. I mean, did you see enough in Landry Jones to think right, we've got a quarterback here we can build around going forward? You know, we, they've seen him a few times. So they have that answer in house. Roethlisberger in the past has brought up things that have been over exaggerated or taken to mean a lot more than what uh, what it really ended up happening. So I, I don't know. I listened to that, given the history of Ben, and I'm not thinking he's on the verge of retirement. I could be wrong. We, we don't know. But I, I just my guess of listening to that is don't panic just yet. Do you like Landry Jones? Are you comfortable there? Can you retain him, keep him? And this way your, your plan for the future is in-house, or do you have to start over from scratch? It, Pittsburgh has an idea of that. I wouldn't feel like I'm panicking today when I hear Ben Roethlisberger say that, if I was in the Steelers' front office. Mike Tirico joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Matt Ryan getting a shot here. I, I'm sure you've had many a um, uh, pregame moment with him um, in your days with Monday Night Football. If not, I, I'm mm-hmm. trying to remember. Yeah. I, I don't remember my wife, Susie, going to BC to cover one of his games with you as part of the crew that you were together. But uh, you must have known him for quite some time, Mike. I have, yeah, yeah, I'm old. Yeah, know these guys for a while now. Yeah, right. uh, yeah but I, I saw saw Matt all the way through here. Uh, Rich, every time you left a a meeting with Matt Ryan, you're like, wow, he's great. Exceptional leader, exceptional person, uh, all all this stuff. Uh, He he was one of the guys you feel good about. And I'm glad to see the can they get a team to the Super Bowl club add someone new, add someone like a Matt Ryan. Uh, I I think it helps the league. It's healthy for the league. And I think it's a reward for a guy who, let's circle all the way back. And you mentioned you have Mike Vick on. Let's go back to when the whole Mike Vick thing went down. I'll never forget, we walked out of the booth in Atlanta after Michael Vick's whole situation came down that Monday. And I was with Jaws, and we did the game. And Jaws said, it's going to be years till we're back here. Because it just felt like the whole organization was in a spiral downward. They drafted Matt Ryan. They didn't miss a beat. He's done a great job, and I'm so happy for him and for the organization to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and, and the Falcons, um, as you point out with Michael Vick, how it all went down, and Mike is going to be on later. You you called that game in the Superdome the night the Superdome reopened and yeah, how right. Vick came in that night with the Atlanta Falcons, and I guess just with him coming up, I'd 
What was your recollection of that night? I know I'm kind of making a left turn here in our conversation, oh, but, but uh, just Vic coming in and being the team in the Superdome for the, mm-hmm. the Superdome to be reopened, you called that game. Yeah, that, that night, this is really odd, Rich. I was just talking about this on a radio show in Kansas City today. Mm. Uh, that night reminded me that what we do in sports is not just uh, the toy factory. It's not just a happy place. It can mean something. Because I don't know if anything can galvanize a city more than its professional sports teams. You may have the greatest ballet, the greatest symphony orchestra. They might travel the country. They don't go around wearing a tuxedo that says New Orleans. <laughs> or they don't go around wearing on their dancing outfits Boston or Michigan or Detroit or Seattle or anything like that. But pro sports teams do. So they become embodiments of your civic pride. And that night, New Orleans had something to galvanize itself around, and it was that team. And Atlanta coming in, they were the rival down in the south. And remember what the Michael Vick starts were like in Atlanta. I mean, that place was jumping. It was exciting. It was loud. It was passionate. He had this unbelievable following in Atlanta and with, with that team. So when they came in and they became the you know, secondary act to the whole New Orleans return, uh, it was supposed to be a big game and an important game. And they went three and out. The punt was blocked with Steve Gleason. Curtis Deloach scored it, and uh, it changed forever. Changed, the whole thing changed forever. Mike Tarico here on the Rich Eisen Show. I want to draw on now your your experience and expertise and knowledge with Coach K and Duke. What do you think's going on with Grayson Allen? Mike. It's interesting. I, I think I think like everybody who's ever played any sport at any level, you know that it, if somebody is having some mental doubts as a competitor, sometimes you, you're, you're trying to poke them, you're trying to get under their skin. We saw that with Odell Beckham Jr. this year early on, remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was struggling and, and opponents said, hey, you know, we'll, we'll challenge him a little. We'll see if we can draw him into something. And he's going to get that plus the hostility on the road. Is it fair for a college kid who's going through something that's uh, you know, uncomfortable and difficult? No, it's not fair. But it's part of what happens when you get the joys and the benefits of, of this. Uh, without knowing the young man or without knowing everything around him, it's mm-hmm. hard to sit back, watch on TV, and say, I've got a feel for this. And that, that's what gets us all in trouble as a media, not just, not just in sports. But you hope that whatever the issue has been with him, that the people around him, and they've got the best people in every way, dude, the, the people around him can give him some place to grow from, learn from, and persevere from the issues that he's had to deal with publicly in terms of the ridicule. It, it's not easy. We forget that they're kids, and they are. I know that they've got a big stage and they've been exposed to a lot. They're still kids, and they're still imperfect. So you just kind of hope that it goes in the right direction when you see a guy going through all that stuff. Game in, game out now, it seems. Yeah, I know. And Coach K uh, being out as well, um, yeah. it, it's just a unique situation. But, you know, you have to figure that Allen, they have a few more games left to figure this out before they get to the NCAA tournament. We has an opportunity to just erase all of it. I mean, all he's got to do is go on a nice little run here and then perhaps uh, comport himself in, in a way that seems to be adult. Um, yeah, but and, and, remember – I'm, I'm sorry, Richard. Remember, sure. Duke, Duke always plays the role. Duke players have played the role of villain unfairly for many years. So th- there's probably all of that, you know, the whole Christian Leitner uh, story. And there, there's a lot of that baggage that is automatically unfairly, completely unfairly thrust upon this situation as well. So that that's what you hate. I, I think when you get older and you have kids and you see the struggles that all young people seem to have, and how they're overexposed in these spotlights by all of us. There's a sympathetic part of you, but it's also the reality. They know what they're signing up for, and he's got to figure out a way to deal with it. Mike, appreciate the time. I look forward to seeing you down in Houston, truly. We are very excited. Does the world know that you're receiving a very big award in Houston, a very prestigious award? Uh, not yet, We we're, but uh, you're, you're going to be hosting it. So the, I am. The... I'm, I'm sure you'll talk about it next week, but I can tell you mm-hmm. that I have gotten word already that crowd estimates are for record numbers. Now, is this are these uh, are these facts or what type of facts are they, Mike? Which what type of facts are they? Rich, I'm an alum of Syracuse University, the finest journalism school in America. We only deal in facts. We are 
mainstream and right down the middle. So okay. These are, you are fake news. They're, 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 there's only there's only one thing we deal with, and that's real facts. Okay. Well, yeah, that's the the uh, the uh, Pat Summerall Award at the uh, the folks at St. Jude are are. are um, are benefiting from and you're just uh you're, you're awesome to host the dinner it means so much to me and Suze that you'll be doing it so thanks anything for you we look forward to it and the record crowds which have already decided <laughs> to attend. we'll see you in houston that's mike Tarico. there he is <laughs> <laughs>